Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hey everyone, welcome back to Theory of Pets. My name is Samantha. Thanks for joining me again this week. This week I want to talk with you guys about the pros and cons of spaying and neutering your pet. Um, This is something that's come up as a topic for me recently in my personal life and It's such an important topic to talk about and discuss that I really wanted to reach out to you guys, share a little bit of my information, maybe get some feedback from you as well. Um, Spaying and neutering is something that in the veterinary field, along with pet owners, it's something that's very widely, there's a big discrepancy there. Some people are all for spaying and neutering, um, you know, veterinarians and pet owners included. Um, Some are for earlier the earlier the better. Some are for uh, later on in the animal's life. Some people are completely against it and they think that it should uh, not be something that's done on a on a normal, you know, regular basis unless there's some kind of an emergency that it needs to be done. So it's, it's – there's a lot of discrepancy – in the field, um, both professionally and with pet owners. So I just wanted to discuss it today, tell you some of the pros and cons. I am one of those people that feels like um, pets should be spayed or neutered. And the my biggest reason for thinking that and um, – you know, the, the number one reason on my list for, for pros is the overpopulation of pets right now. And I, I'm, I guess I say spaying and neutering your dog, but I should be saying spaying and neutering your pets. It's really an overpopulation of pets, everything from uh, dogs and cats to, you know, pet, smaller pets um, like rabbits and, and other animals. So um, really spaying and neutering is extremely important and um, anybody can go to their local shelter or rescue organization and find some truth to this. There are a massive number of homeless animals in the world not it's not even just in our country but it's everywhere and the one of the only ways that we can prevent this is to spay and neuter any animal that's not going to be bred while we're talking about that um, topic you know a lot of people will say that they aren't doing it they're not sure if they want to breed their dog or they might want to someday breeding is something that you should not go into lightly it's not something that you should just say oh you know we have this beautiful uh, Labrador retriever and she's you know wonderfully uh, aesthetically you know she's great she's very healthy she comes from a great line of healthy dogs and you know maybe in the future we might want to breed her it's something that takes a lot of time a lot of thought a lot of planning there's a lot of costs involved to you um, I know some people think about breeding animals or it's uh, a little bit of like a side business and they can make some money doing it there's a lot of cost involved there's a lot of time involved so when you're thinking about how much you're going to make selling these puppies or selling these kittens you also have to think about your time that's going to be spent and um, a lot of times for most people it factors out to be something that it's just not worth the cost to make money off the dogs Um, but certainly if you are thinking about breeding. It's a topic for another day. Um, It's something that definitely you need to research. I've talked about responsible breeding on a previous podcast. Um, There's a ton of great information on the internet about it. If it's something that you think you're interested in, speak with a professional. Talk to a professional breeder. Talk to your veterinarian. Discuss what actually goes into it before you make that choice to think about breeding your dog and if you're like me you are a dog lover I love dogs I two reasons that I don't breed dogs one the time to put into it I just don't have I don't have the time to care for puppies the way that um, you know a litter of puppies would be you know maybe six or eight dogs sometimes more sometimes less kittens are the same way I don't have the time that it would take to care for those animals for eight weeks until they could go to their new home so that's number one for me number two for me and the reason I don't breed is because I I love animals. Raising animals for eight weeks, puppies or kittens, baby bunnies, whatever it might be, eight weeks later, I'm going to be so attached to those animals that I am not going to want to rehome them. So those are the two big reasons that I personally know that I will never breed any animals that I have. So if you're like me and you know that you're not going to breed your dog, you know, spaying and neutering 
there are a, a lot of pros, there are some cons to it, but the number one reason that I would say to breed to spay or neuter if you know you're not going to breed your animal is to control the pet population. You might think that you can keep your dog in the yard, you're going to keep your dog with you. If it's a female, you know, when she's in heat, you're going to keep her away from other animals. Or if it's a male, you know, you're always going to be around him and he's never going to have the chance to get another dog pregnant or, um, you know, cats the same way. You have an indoor cat, so you don't think she's going to get pregnant or you don't think your indoor male cat is going to be able to impregnate another cat. Accidents happen. Pets get away and, you know, indoor cats get outside for an afternoon and they end up coming back or, um, you know, your dog, your female dog who's in heat um, ends up leaving the yard. Animals act differently when they want to mate. So your dog who always stays in the yard, religiously never leaves, might go wandering, might have that you know, desire to want to wander when they're looking for a mate. So it's it's not something that you can always control. And the only way to be sure 100% that you're not going to be contributing to the overpopulation of pets is by spaying or neutering your dog. So that's reason uh, number one for me. Um, reason number two is we have all female dogs and we have two female cats. Uh, we have four cats. Two of them are females. If you have a female animal and you spay her, you do not have to deal with heat cycles. There's no more messy heat cycles. We actually, we have a a little beagle puppy who just went through her first heat cycle. She's actually, um, another reason why I was thinking of the topic of spaying is uh, she's going in next month to be spayed and... Um, you know, we just went through her first heat cycle. We had to wear, keep diapers on her. She would chew the diapers off. We actually had to cut a tail hole in a pair of my son's underwear, um, and slide it, but we put a diaper on her and then put the, um, my son's little undies over her diaper and put her tail out so that she wouldn't be able to chew the under, the, um, the diaper off. It was really, it was weeks of, misery we when she would get the diaper off then there's a mess in your house Um, I can't tell you how many times in the last few weeks that I have washed the the sheets on our bed because our dogs sleep on our bed so um, we are washing bedding when she would get the diaper off in the middle of the night we uh, washed our uh, upholstery more than once because they also get on our furniture so it's something that you know it's really a pain in the neck to spend a couple of weeks with a female in heat unless you you do want to breed her. Of course, if you want to breed her, that's, again, that's another whole issue. But, um, you know, if you don't, if you're not going to breed your dog and she's a female or your cat and she's a female and you don't want to deal with those heat cycles, Spain takes care of that, which is huge. Um, one of the things that most people are concerned about, and now I guess I would say it's the meat and potatoes of this podcast, is the health issues that surround spaying and neutering people and that's where that discrepancy comes from you know there's new research done all the time is it beneficial to spay or neuter health wise at what age is the best age to spay and neuter what it really comes down to is that you should have a veterinarian that works with your pets that you trust and one that you know keeps up on they're furthering their education. So um, when there's new research out there, keeping tabs on that and, and being kept in the know when it comes to things like that. So you really need to have a conversation with your veterinarian. Tell them what your concerns are. You know, I have a female or I have a male dog. I want to get him or her spayed or neutered. And, um, you know, these are my concerns. Are there health concerns spaying a female or neutering a male? Are there uh, – is there a time that you feel better – about spaying or neutering in the animal's life you know before a one-year-old is pretty common um that's most of the time in the veterinary field that's called an early spay and it's before a year old Um, a lot of vets will not spay or neuter an animal before six months old um, but between six and, and a year six months and a year is okay um some vets would encourage you to wait a little bit longer than that There's actually research that shows that um, one in four, when a a dog is not spayed or neutered, they call it intact. So um, for the rest of this podcast, when you hear the word intact, that's what that means, that the dog is not spayed or neutered. Um, So there's research that shows that one in four intact females will actually develop an infection called pyometra. And what that is, is it's when the uterus swells up with um, some toxic, like, 
pus and the only thing that you can do to cure that is to have an emergency spay done. Um, if the uterus ruptures before you're able to do that, um, like I said, it's filled with that toxic pus. It, it can lead to um, death if not treated quickly. Um, and it, it's very, very dangerous. It's something that's very, uh, it's it's a terrible process for the dog to go through. Um, and then that emergency spay, you know, they're going to have to be spayed anyway, and they're going to have to go through that healing process. So um, that's something that a lot of vets will talk about spaying females. Again, the age on that kind of varies, but um, it it go some vets will say uh, like if your dog spayed usually before they're like two or two and a half years old um, they're like le- less likely to develop uh, mammary tumors so some vets will say you know do it before two some vets will say like I said that six month to a year gap um, it really it depends on your vet it depends on um, like I said you you want to be working with a veterinarian that you trust, somebody that's up to date with all the latest research. Um, There are certain types of cancers that they say are uh, your dog is less likely to get if they are spayed or neutered. And there are certain types of cancers that they are um, more likely to get when they're spayed or neutered. Typically, what the research shows right now is that it's actually healthier for your dog to be spayed or neutered. There is um, There are you know, more health issues that are, they are less likely to contract if they're spayed or neutered. So um, that's really the way that the research leads right now, that spaying or neutering is, um, keeps your dog healthier. So that's um, certainly one of the top reasons for me to think about it. There has been research for um, male dogs. There was actually a study done at the Davis Veterinary School, which is at the University of California, um, that showed they did a study on uh, male golden retrievers. It was a smaller study. They're the group of dogs. It was less than 800 dogs that they studied, um, and, of course, all in that same area. So uh, not every expert in the industry, you know, takes – this research to heart. There's certainly more that needs to be done on the subject, but uh, what it showed basically was that hip dysplasia occurred twice as often in these male golden retrievers that were neutered before the age of one. So again, you know, that early spaying or neutering, there's some downsides there. So you do want to want to talk with your vet about uh, the best time, what what would be the best time to spay or neuter uh, your animal. Spaying and neutering uh, also, obviously, it it prevents any issues around pregnancy. You don't have to wonder, you know, if your female dog got out, is she could she be pregnant? Uh, there's no wondering if your male dog got out and suddenly somebody's dog in the neighborhood is pregnant. My gosh, could those be his puppies? There's none of that stuff. You don't have any risks involved with pregnancy whatsoever. So there's a lot of pros. Um, there are a few drawbacks, and it's definitely, again, it's something to talk to your veterinarian about about and make that informed decision. One of the biggest uh, risks associated with spaying and neutering is it it um, increases your dog's chances of obesity. It kind of it helps to calm them down, uh, which is a nice pro, especially if you have a more hyperactive dog. What it does is it changes the um, balance of the hormones in your dog's system. So it, it does help to calm them down. But with that and that loss of energy, they also increase their chances of obesity. So to me, it, it definitely is a disadvantage, but it's not a deal breaker for me because, um, you know, obesity really comes with proper diet and exercise. So if you had a dog before that, you know, you could free feed her or him and um, they just ran around in your yard a few times a day and they were always healthy um, as far as their body weight, you know, that's that's great. Um, spaying or neutering, you now you might not be able to free feed them. Maybe you only feed them two meals a day in the morning and at night and you measure out their food. Um, and instead of maybe just romping around the yard a couple of times a day, you actually have to go for a walk or go for down to the dog park and play for a little while or something like that. So um, it is certainly a disadvantage and I, I do understand that. But at the same time, it's something that can be easily fixed by just changing your behavior and the way that you care for your dog. Um, Controlling the amount that you feed and adding in some exercise will cancel out that risk of obesity as long as you're aware of that and you stay on top of it. Um, You know, I don't see a lot of issues there, but spaying or neutering does increase that risk. 
It also, um, like I said, it increases the risk of a, a few, a select few types of cancer. Um, and there's some research on that. It, it's different for females and males. So um, again, you know, speak with your vet. That's that's the only thing that I can recommend, and they can explain to you. Um, you know, it seems to me that the pros outweigh the cons, but it might not be, you might not feel the same way. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't like about having to spay or neuter their dog is that their dog has to undergo a major surgery. It is major surgery. Your dog has to be put under anesthesia. Um, most of the time you can drop them off at the vet in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon if all goes well. They may have to spend the night at the vet's office. Um, you know, some people don't like that. They don't like their dog having to go under anesthesia anesthesia if it's not 100% necessary. They don't like putting their dog's body through such a huge surgery. Um, They do cut into your dog and there is a long healing process. Um, I know when we've had our dog spayed in the past, they've had to been leash walked for a week and uh, we can only take them outside to use the bathroom. There's not really a lot of you know, leeway as far as how much they can play, no climbing stairs, no jumping, things like that. So um, it is a bit of a recovery period and it's something that you need to take into consideration when you're thinking about that. But again, you know, a quick conversation with your vet, they can tell you exactly what to expect. I really, as far as I'm concerned, um, spaying or neutering is, is really the only way to help control the pet population completely eliminate the risk of pregnancy in your dog or your dog getting another dog pregnant. Um, Again, we have all female dogs, so those heat cycles, really canceling those out is a huge pro for me. Um, With male dogs, you know, there's benefits to uh, their testicles are removed, so some people don't like that. They think it alters the appearance of the dog. Um, for me, I actually, I like the look of a, of a male dog better without the testicles. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons. Some of it is certainly a personal choice as far as like with the male dogs, the aesthetic look of them after they've been altered um, is simply a personal preference. But, you know, speak with your vet, talk about some of those the actual health concerns, the things that are really going to matter long term for your dog. Uh, It's likely that your vet is probably going to recommend spaying and neutering. Most vets do. I've actually never spoken with a vet that doesn't. Um, And again, if you're going to breed your dog, a lot of them will recommend spaying or neutering after you're done breeding. So, um, you know, say you breed your female dog until she's five or six years old. Uh, Once you're done and you're no longer going to breed her, they recommend spaying right away. So it's something to discuss with your vet. It's something to do some research on and look into. Um, There are certainly pros and cons to both sides. If you guys have any questions about spaying or neutering your dog, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Jump on our website, which is theoryofpets.com. You can leave questions there. Uh, You can record them in an audio if you want, and I will use them in future podcasts. You can also um, just type your questions. You can email me as well. My email address is samantha at topdogtips.com. If there's any podcast um, topics that you would like to hear covered Um, if there's any special guest speakers I've had um, you know interviews with guest speakers in the past everything from veterinarians to people that work for companies in the pet industry so if you have um, you know if there's somebody or a certain area that you would like a a guest speaker to answer some certain questions you know any kind of suggestions like that I'd be happy to take so um, be sure to send those my way and if you guys wouldn't mind taking just a minute to jump on iTunes and give me a review that would be really great Um, if I can get some good reviews it helps me to promote the podcast a little bit more and get some more guest speakers on here to speak with us and answer our questions so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Theory of Pets and I will see you back next time when I talk about adopting senior dogs another very important topic